welcome to a new tutorial series on how to use Blender. Now I personally have never used a 3D modeling program before and I've decided to pick up Blender kind of as a hobby. I'm kind of interested in some game design hobby but in reality I've never used it before and in learning I decided to put out a new tutorial with a new perspective on learning it from scratch. So let's dive right in and hopefully it's helpful. First thing you're going to need to do is navigate over to your web browser and go to blender.org. Once you're there, hit the download tab you'll see on the top. Find your version, go ahead and download the installer. The installer can be between 30 and 50 megabytes and go ahead and install it on whatever operating system you have. So that's pretty easy. I'm not going to go through the install process. But while I'm in the web browser, I want to point out that I am learning from a wiki book called Blender 3D Noob 2 Pro and I'll put the link to this wiki book underneath the video and it is quite useful it's not 100 percent complete but it has a substantial amount of information that's really good and I will be skipping an introduction part that reviews 3D geometry and coordinate systems if you're not familiar with coordinate systems and geometry you should go ahead and review that it's good material but I feel pretty good about it and it's kind of redundant. Everybody wants to just jump right into the program, so we'll just jump right into the program today. Today we're going to be talking about the user interface just in general and going over a few system preferences. So, I'll go ahead and open Blender. and It looks something like this. You'll see a nice splash screen. Go ahead and just click on it to get rid of it. And here's the big layout. Lots of buttons, lots of settings. It's pretty intimidating if this is your first time. So the first thing that catches your eye, well, let me just start out by saying this whole interface is made out, made up of different windows. They're just kind of stuck together. The main one that you see first is this grid with the box, this cube in the middle. This is the 3D view window. Now part of the 3D view window is also the menu on the left and the header, even though it's called a header, that runs beneath it. So this header down here, this menu on the left, and this window are all the 3D view window. Above the 3D view window, you have just a small header that's called the info window. And we'll come back to this later to get to the user preferences. On the top right, you have what's called the outline window, which kind of outlines your whole project. Beneath that, you have the Properties window. It takes up most of the right-hand side. And the Properties window reflects the properties of the currently selected item in the 3D view window. You'll notice that you have this cube, and this cube has an orange outline around it. That means it's selected. And so all of these properties, as much as they can be, reflect properties that the cube has. And you'll notice that it's not just this one page, but there's almost these tabs or contexts as they're called of different things. So right now we start off on the render. There's also scene, world, object. Click on a couple of them so you can see. There's physics over here. There's particles. There's a lot of different options you can go through and they're all kind of contained in this right side menu. And then finally we have a view window or sorry, not a view window. We have a timeline window that runs along the bottom. If you've ever video, if you've ever done video or audio editing, this may look familiar to you. It runs based on frames. Um, frame number is the number along the bottom, and its header is also along its bottom edge. So you'll notice one thing that all of these headers on all of these windows have in common is, and I'll point this out more specifically, on the left side of each header, there's this pull-down menu. There's, here it is for the 3D view, here it is for the timeline. Over here, you'll see on the far left edge of the properties header, there's this pull down menu, info, and outline. All of them have this pull down menu, and that what that does is it allows any window to be any other window. So if I wanted to make the 3D view window into, say, a file browser, I'd click on that pull down menu and pull the file browser. Now be careful because the header then switches to the top. So find the header again, go to the far left side, and turn it back to the 3D view window. So any of these can be fully customized, any of these windows. 
You can also find the edges between windows and click and drag to resize horizontally or vertically. You can also right click on that edge and split areas into multiple windows or you can right click on that edge and join areas to pick them back. I'm going to be sticking with the default layout so I put everything pretty much back to how it starts out but if you want to fully customize yours you're welcome to. A side note, if you do split a window and you say you have multiple 3D view windows for example while they may represent different views or like different perspectives on the object anything you do to one is going to be immediately updated in the other. They're real time together uh, which is quite useful. Alright, so that's a quick overview. Remember we have an info header, outline, window, properties window, timeline window, and 3D view window. Now the 3D view window in depth, well more in depth, is going to be the subject of my next video, video number two. But before we end this video, I want to just point out a couple of important user preferences. So find the info header, go to file, user preferences. Now this window should start out in editing. Under editing, there's these undo settings. So you want to be able to undo things if you mess up or make a mistake. You can set a hard limit on the number of steps or the memory limit if for some reason you don't have a lot of RAM in your system. Um, this can take up a, a significant amount of memory and so if you're working on a constrained machine you may want to set a limit there. Also click over to file and make sure that autosave is enabled and set a good timer for your work style. You want to be able to have this autosaved in case something catastrophic happens so you don't lose all your work. Um, and finally click over to input and find this little checkbox called emulate numpad. And What this does is if you don't have a numpad which is used for a lot of hotkeys that are common then you may want to check this box to make the main numbers act like the numpad numbers. And we'll get a little more into some what some of those numpad numbers do in the next video. A lot of them have to do with the 3D view. So if you do have a numpad, don't worry about it. But if you don't have a numpad, I would recommend checking that box. All right, you're welcome to look around this user preferences for any other things you want to customize. I have left everything default and will continue so for as long as possible. All right, well, I hope you feel a lot more comfortable with the interface and you know where to look to customize things. And next time, we'll jump into using it more.